What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G Sports.com. Well, we've had the bye week, so now it's time to jump on to Auburn. And we're going to talk to Andrew Ellis about it. We're going to talk to Danny West about recruiting. We'll talk a little bit about basketball also. We don't have Curtis on until Thursday, but we're still going to jump into some basketball because the exhibition season has begun. All that and more on today's episode of Hogsports Live. Well, before we get started, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live, and also be sure to check us out on Facebook. Follow the page on Facebook Live. Be one of 90,000 Razorback fans to do so. We're trying to get up to that 100,000 mark. And uh, subscribe to the channel on uh, on YouTube. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. Throw us a thumbs up or a like on both of those platforms, and uh, leave a comment. Share the comment. Share the content with somebody else. If you got somebody in your family that maybe is not familiar with YouTube or or Apple Podcast or or whatever uh introduce them to the podcast introduce them to the show see if they like it um also i mentioned apple podcast but we'd love to have that five-star review from us if you haven't done so already take a moment leave us a five-star review say something nice about the show let others know what they can expect uh hog sports is also just one dollar right now for your first month at hawg sports.com or 30 percent off for your first year it's an important time to be subscribed to hog sports because this is the stretch run for razorback football i've mentioned several times i think i think that arkansas it's not just going to be competitive in every every game, but I think they've got a chance to win every single game remaining on the schedule. That includes LSU. That includes Ole Miss. We watched that game this weekend. Uh, it's always fun to watch two future opponents go at it. So there were some intriguing games this weekend. Obviously, the BYU-Liberty game uh, it definitely looks a little bit, I don't know, concerning. You can't compare scores. You know, there's always the possibility, as somebody said, that, uh, that Arkansas just broke BYU, you know, and they had to go on the road to Liberty. So... Auburn, 11 a.m., SEC Network, Jordan-Hare Stadium. It's always a tough environment. It's always something weird happens. In the preseason, I actually picked Arkansas to lose this game, not because I thought Auburn had a better team, because I thought Auburn was going to kind of collapse by this point. I just know Auburn. Every time Arkansas seems to go to Auburn, something happens. Somebody gets stuck in an elevator. They get a really beneficial call, like last time, with the, uh, the field goal. The fake, the spike behind the fumble, I mean, whatever you want to call it. It was ridiculous. Uh, the time Tremaine Thomas knocked the ball out of uh, the Auburn ball carrier's hands at the goal line, and they still scored a touchdown. <laughs> you know, there's there's always something that seems to happen at Auburn. All right. Hey, when I got you here, I want to remind you real quick. Um, if you aren't familiar with Hog Hoops Live, you need to check that out. That was with Curtis Wilkerson. Curtis does a lot of great stuff. He does, you know, a stand-up outside the arena and stuff. He's done one in Birmingham uh, just recently. Um, he'll do one uh, at Texas uh, for that game, uh, for that uh, exhibition game. He also does a, a live show very similar to this, a very similar setup to this, uh, it, but he's talking basketball primarily. If you haven't gone over to Hog Hoops Live, H-A-W-G Hoops Live, uh, check out his content there. I think you'll really like the show. If you like this one, if you like the stuff that we do at Hog Sports, uh, then you want to go check out his show. He's got like – he just started it last year, I guess, so he's got one, like 1. 1.5 thousand subscribers. So I want to get that subscription count up, and uh, I think it's a show that you'll really enjoy also. Where do we want to start off here? So – Arkansas coming off 52-35 at BYU, 230 game. The last 11 o'clock game was Auburn, or excuse me, was Mississippi State at Mississippi State. And so kind of a similar deal going on the road for an early game. After this weekend, it's Liberty. That game has been set for 3 o'clock on the SEC Network. Then LSU, that's November 5th, Liberty. Then LSU, November 12th. Ole Miss, November 19th, and at Missouri, November 25th. Individually, Arkansas can win every single one of these games. And if they do that, that's nine regular season wins. If they don't do that and they drop one, which I think they're going to win at least four, if they drop one, then they have the same records they had last year. So Arkansas set to host Rogers State for the exhibition tonight. I'm going to go 7 o'clock in Bud Walton Arena. It's a Division II team. It's Monday for those who may be listening later. There's no TV or streaming or anything like that, but you can listen to it on radio, available the Razorback Game Day app. It's a ticketed event, so you need a ticket. It's part of the season ticket package, but you also get a ticket if you attended the red-white game. They were distributed there too. 
You can watch Nick Smith Jr. The preseason accolades continue to pour in for Nick Smith Jr. First team preseason All-SEC selection. Second team preseason All-America selection. And national preseason SEC Freshman of the Year by CBS Sports. A lot of great players to check out. Now, just looking at the schedule for basketball, you've got Roger State today, Monday, October 24th, Bud Walton Arena, 7 p.m., and then Saturday at 3 o'clock you get at Texas, October 29th. You usually don't see it, an exhibition game of that caliber that early in the season. And then it's a long stretch, November 7th, North Dakota State. So you got Razorback football at 11. you got Razorback basketball at 3. And then November 7th. So pretty decent stretch there until you get to, uh, to the regular season. You know what else is pretty decent is Ozarks Go. Ozarks Go, if you don't have Ozarks Go, you should really check them out. They're available in northwest Arkansas and northeast Oklahoma. If you get a bill from Ozarks, uh, Ozarks Electric, then you probably you know, can get Ozarks Go. If you're interested, you can go to ozarksgo.net slash hog. That's Ozarks Go dot net slash h-a-w-g to find out more information check if they're available in your area you can even leave a message you say hey we'd love for you to come to our area i don't like my internet i personally have had three different internet services before i landed on ozarks go the one i'm going to get uh, the one i'm going to keep you can also reach them at 479-684-4900 again 479-684-4900 if you'd rather reach them that way but the preferred way is to go to ozarksgo.net slash hog and find out if they're available in your area and you know another good thing like i've never had to worry about these guys i've had perfect internet since i've had them over a year now 16 months but if you like if you're moving or something or you're wanting to, to get it installed or you have some questions or something, just know that when you call them and talk to them, if you need to, you're going to talk to somebody in this region, you know, in northeast Oklahoma, in northwest Arkansas. You're not going to be shipped out to some other country or something like that. You're going to talk to somebody, uh, you know, one of your neighbors in this area who's familiar with the area. So that's just another good benefit of, uh, of having a local company like Ozarks Go. So go to Ozarks Go and check them out. That's how you spell it, Ozarks Go. There's your icon. Let's see. So Auburn, just looking ahead again, and I'm running a little bit behind, but I'm, I'm going to get to you, uh, Andrew, next. Uh, Auburn is 3-4 and four right now. They're 1-3 they're and three in the SEC. Their first five games of the season were at Jordan-Hare Stadium. I mean, that's how you schedule. That's how you start the schedule. You get all home games. They didn't really necessarily take advantage of it like they needed to. They lost to Mercer 42-16. Or, excuse me, they didn't lose to Mercer. They beat Mercer 42-16. They beat San Jose State 24-16. They beat, excuse me, they lost to Penn State 41-12. That one was, that one was like, oh, crap. We suck kind of moment because, uh, you know, Penn State had that big white out there at their place last year. So Auburn did uh, what an orange out this year and uh, just laid an egg, 41-12 loss. They, then they rebounded and beat Missouri 17-14, uh, beat LSU – or excuse me, lost to LSU. Can't get my wins and losses right. Lost to LSU 21-17, went to Georgia, finally took a trip to the road, went to Georgia and lost 42-10. to That's a game that's usually a lot later in the season. 42 to 10, and then went to Ole Miss and lost 48 34. I guess maybe their best offensive game really was against Ole Miss, 48 34 uh, loss, and then the bye week heading into this game. Auburn's scoring offense is 13th in the SEC, 22.3 points per game. Not a very good offense. They're really struggling. They turn the ball over a lot. They don't have a quarterback, in my opinion. They're ninth in. Yards per game, 377.6. Rushing their eighth, 170. Tank's big piece of stud. Ashford, he can run the ball also at quarterback. Passing their 13th, 207.6 yards per game. Defense, scoring defense is 12th in the SEC, 28.3 points per, per game allowed. A total defense, their 10th at 391. Rushing, 14th, 204.4 yards per game allowed. Man, if you're Arkansas, you've got to be licking your chops at that number. Passing. Fourth, 186.6 yards per game. I don't think that's as indicative of how good of a pass defense they are because everybody's able to run on them. If you're running the ball at will, like they're giving up 204.4 yards per game, then why would you pass? So I don't think that's a, 
necessarily an indicator of, of how that they are, are super strong against the pass. Turnovers, they're the worst turnover team in the country. They're 14th in the SEC, minus 1.57 turnovers. So they have – they're minus 11 for the season, okay? They've lost 16 turnovers. They've gained five. That's pretty bad. Now, is that because they've been unlucky or is it because they're just terrible in that regard? I mean, you're not going to win a lot of games doing that. Arkansas, for perspective, is even at 9-9. and nine. Tank Bigsby, who I mentioned, has 99 carries, 548 yards, 5.3 yards per carry, six touchdowns. This dude can run the ball, and people know he's getting it. And, I mean, a couple years ago, he ran all over Arkansas. I think he was a freshman that year. Robbie Ashford, 74 carries, 427 yards rushing. It's pretty good for a quarterback. 4.3 yards per carry, three touchdowns. He, in a lot of ways, to me, is a running back back there. He's only 67 of 140 passing for 47.9%. 1,014 yards, four touchdowns, five picks. They also have T.J. Finley. You guys probably remember back in 2020, played for LSU. This dude's like 6'7", 250, can throw it through a brick wall. But in my opinion, that's about it. I'm not impressed with either one of these quarterbacks. Arkansas has a huge advantage at quarterback, in my opinion. Javarius Johnson, when they do throw it, has 19 catches, 335 yards, 17.6 yards a catch, touchdown. Owen Papoa, I don't even know if that's how you say it. I hope Phil Pil- Pil- Perry Philpot doesn't get on to me. Perry Philpot got mad at me for saying Malik Chavis's – sorry, Chavis. I have a hard time with his name. I'm sorry, Perry. Perry got mad at me. Um, I know it's Chavis. I hear a lot of people say it a, different, a lot of different ways. You know, there's um, there's um, Chavis, who was the defensive coordinator at Arkansas. I know a guy named Chavis. So, it's one of those that I hard, have a hard time saying. I hear people say it wrong, and then I said Chavis, and Perry says. So, rather than comply and repeat what the head coach says, or I don't know, maybe get a hold of Kyle Parkinson and simply ask, you choose to be difficult. Good job. Says a lot about your morals as a person. Dang, Perry. Says about my morals? About my morals, because I said his name wrong? Yikes. Sorry, it's just one of those names that's hard for me. Malik Chavis. I worked on it. Is that all right, Perry? It says a lot about my morals just because I said somebody's name wrong. That one hurts, Perry. I guess we'll never know because I did block you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's get to uh, let's get to Andrew Ellis. Andrew Andrew's, Andrew's been involved in baseball, basketball, football, a lot of stuff here recently, and he's a good follow. If you don't follow him, at Andrew Ellis two four seven on Twitter. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing wonderful, Trey. How's it going? I'm doing wonderful too. I mean, we had a nice bye week. Got some stuff done around the house. Cleaned out the closet. Cleaned out the office. Cleaned out the car. Hung some string lights, did some yard work. How about you? What'd you do this week? Uh, I uh, I bullied Curtis Wilkerson into coming to Buffalo Wild Wings and watching I saw that. UFC fights with me. That was uh, <laughs> that was the highlight of the weekend for sure. You had to bully him into it. Uh, you know, you know, you don't have to bully him too much, but you know, I I don't I don't think uh, going to beat ups to watch UFC fights is something he would have done on his own. So I had to I had to talk him into it a little bit. Get yeah. him psyched up. So, Andrew, you've watched some, some Razorback baseball recently. You were at the Red-White game. You'll be at the game tonight against Roger State um, and obviously watched a lot of football. First of all, let's, let's talk about baseball. Um, what, have you, what did you see from those guys in the Fall Classic? Well, it was, uh, it was fun. So, the Fall Classic – or the Fall World Series they just finished up was, you know, they, they pitched a lot of their younger pitchers and – you know, Is they, that what they're calling it, the Fall s- World Series, not the Fall Class? Yes, yes. Okay, and gotcha. they usually do – they try to do a five- or a seven-game series, but they played the two exhibition games against the Rangers team. So they just did a three quick three-game series and threw a lot of younger guys. But it was really cool to see them. You know, they're obviously playing against themselves, but they split up the teams and they stick to it. And those teams are pulling for each other. And it's pretty – you know, it's a pretty competitive atmosphere. You know, dugouts chirping a good bit and some – good lighthearted fun but it was really good to see them compete in that type of setting but i've just been really impressed with the pitching staff you know all the way around i mean they've you know the, there's a lot of returning stars like a hagan smith brady tiger will mcintyre and just the additions that they brought in i mean cody adcock is a guy that is a former old miss pitcher who came from the juco ranks he's been unbelievable 
Hunter Hollins, another Juco guy. I mean, you just go on down the list. The arms have been really, really good this fall. <laughs> and I'd say it's probably the strength of the team. And I think people are going to be really kind of pleasantly surprised with the talent that's on this team. I think last year people were kind of underwhelmed throughout the year because they knew how talented the team was. I think it's going to be opposite this year where people are kind of pleasantly surprised by what they see. Andrew Ellis joining us again. You can follow him at Andrew Ellis 24 seven on Twitter. He is a uh, Jack of all trades at Hog sports does a lot of video stuff too. Uh, Real quick, basketball. What are, you, what are you expecting out of this basketball team tonight? You'll be at the game. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting because, you know, we were talking about it the other day that last year when they played an exhibition game, their first exhibition, they yeah. were a three-pointer at the buzzer away from losing to a D2 school. And obviously that team ended up going on to be very good. And so the exhibition games aren't the end-all, be-all. But it'll be interesting to see how they come out today because, you know, Coach Musk the other day in the press conference, just a it was a low-energy must, which is not something you see often. I think that you know, he's got a young team on his hands and obviously a very talented team, but I think he's kind of dealing with a little bit of that struggle of getting these guys to understand what they want them to do and how they want to play and the expectations. And so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of effort we get from those guys tonight. And I, if I had to imagine just, you know, being knowing coach Musk the last few years, I'd imagine he got after him pretty good this, you know, the last mm-hmm. few days. And so it'd be, it'd be cool to see how they play and just see how these guys respond to a, you know, quote unquote game atmosphere, even though it won't be a true Bud Walton arena, but I'm really excited to watch this team. I'm, you know, they're really fun, really talented. I think we're going to see them evolve a lot over the year as they kind of figure out who they are and build that identity. And, you know, today's the fir- tonight's the first step of that. Yeah. Hopefully they'll, uh, you know, with all the early practices and the overseas trip and all that stuff, they'll get it together a little quicker. The last year team obviously took a really long time, uh, to gel and thought you had something and maybe you didn't and, and all of those types of things. But you would like to think that they will start off faster and also at the same time not peak too early. You don't want, you don't want to peak too early either. Absolutely. And I, I think that's something that's important to remind ourselves of when we try to overreact to things of, you know, just when you compare and contrast the last few years, that's kind of how it's gone. They would start off pretty solid in non-conference face a little bit of a rough patch there in that December, January area, mm-hmm. and then kind of turn it on. Obviously they would like to not go through that rough patch, but it, you know, I, I always wonder what would have happened if last year's team, we had gotten to see them go overseas considering how bad they were in that exhibition game. I'm sure last year's team wouldn't have fared too well if we saw them play legitimate competition before the season. So yeah, it's definitely, and you know, this, this is such a unique team because you know, there's so many new faces, you know, each year, you know, there's parallels between all the teams, but this year's team, there's so many, newcomers and really Devo's the only guy that played you know yeah. on last year's team I know Kamani you know had some games that he started in non-conference here and there but you know it's just such a different team and it's gonna be fun to see them find their unique identity and obviously they're gonna need to be really good on the defensive end and that's something that we expect them to be but it'll be fun to see them find their identity and find themselves and we'll see how early it happens yeah Kamani in the red white game was the only guy on the floor because Debo was out so he was the only guy that uh of scholarship guys that that played last year so uh you looked at Auburn any yet Andrew you got any thoughts on this well, game I haven't I haven't really dove in deep into Auburn but I've watched them enough throughout this year that in, you know obviously it's Auburn I'm pretty familiar with most of what I've seen yeah. there and I you know I've, I've really I watched a lot of that Auburn Ole Miss game which was kind of a weird game and you know Auburn ran the ball really well in that game ran for I think yeah. over 300 yards I think there was a little bit of fool's gold there. You know, that's something that, I mean, I think Bigsby's a good back, but that's, you know, Auburn had not been gashing people like that all year. And we also saw this past weekend that Ole Miss's defense might not be as good as they performed earlier in the year. They're kind of going through a little bit of their struggles on that end as well. And, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to see Arkansas's defense, you know, kind of starting to get healthy. We'll kind of see what they're really about now. And I don't imagine Auburn's going to be able to run for 300 yards against them. You know, the only teams that have really been able to have that much success against, on the ground against Arkansas are the teams that have spread them out effectively. And, you know, Auburn really, really does not trust their quarterbacks. I cannot emphasize that enough. Yeah, They don't trust their quarterbacks. And so I think it's going to be hard for them to open things up a little bit. I wouldn't trust their quarterbacks either. I mean, I, I just – I'm not impressed at all. I mean, they're two very different guys back there. Uh, obviously, Ashford's the guy that they want to go with now. But uh, – just very, very different. I think Arkansas should come after him, hit him as much as they can, rattle him, all that stuff. As long as Arkansas takes care of business and don't 
you know, have special teams gaffes or turn the ball over a lot or, you know, just make these huge mistakes. Of course, Auburn, there's something about that place that always something seems to happen to screw you out of a game. But, I mean, when I look at that program, I just see a, a program that is just spiraling downward and has been for some time. Uh, to me, it would be a real gut punch for Arkansas to lose to them given where their program is and, you know, the idea that Arkansas is more on the ascent. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you wholeheartedly on the idea that Auburn is just a weird place to play. You know, like if this game were in Fayetteville, this is probably a matchup where I would think Arkansas might run away with this one. Mm-hmm. You know, I really just think they have a significant advantage in a lot of key matchups. You mentioned the quarterback. I mean, that's about as big of a discrepancy as you're going to find in the SEC. This is a matchup that Arkansas has a lot of advantages in. But like you said, Auburn's a weird place, and it just seems like those games there – never go as planned and there's always just weird things that happen and but it'll be it'll be uh fun to see the atmosphere if Arkansas gets an early lead I feel like that's the kind of game where you know it might be time for the guys to mail it in if they fall behind early we'll see how they respond you know obviously they know their coach is on the hot seat and that crowd you know sometimes it, you know home field advantage can kind of go against you when you're in a situation like Auburn's in where you're you know a lot of contention in the air they're kind of angry with their coach they don't know who their quarterback is. It could get interesting if Arkansas plays to their capabilities and starts fast, which is you know something they really haven't done this year, though. Yeah, Auburn's definitely in a pickle right now. Anything else you want to add, Andrew? Uh, not much, other than you know you mentioned that you know there's no stream or television for tonight's game. So yeah. the best place to find out what's going on with Arkansas's exhibition is Hogsports.com. We'll have live updates. We'll have game threads. We'll have a game story afterwards we'll have three or four stories following the press conference i mean there's nobody that really goes all out and covers basketball like hog sports does i mean that's that's true and it's been that way since curtis wilkerson's been here he's really just taken the basketball coverage to another level with this side and you know i'm really excited to get this season going and get it started yeah and curtis will also be in uh in austin for arkansas's game against texas given his insight there too all right andrew i appreciate you I, i love that i asked you if you had any more thoughts and you pump up one of the team members Team player. Hey, I'm a good morale guy. That's what I do. <laughs> He's a get-up guy. All right, everybody. Appreciate you, Andrew. Appreciate you. All right, everybody. That's Andrew Ellis. Does a great job with us over at Hog Sports. The next guy, uh, you guys are familiar with Danny West, of course. But if you're not familiar with Andrew, you should go check him out on Twitter, at Andrew Ellis. 24 7 on twitter he's a great follow over there and, and really doesn't have the number of follows that would justify how good he is because obviously he's newer but i'm letting you know he does a good job we wouldn't have brought him on if we didn't like him or if we didn't think he did a good job how you doing so danny much. i'm good man what's going on oh nothing much we we're just talking to old andrew ellis about some things i gave him an opportunity to give his insight on stuff, and all he wanted to do was talk about how good Curtis is at basketball coverage. <laughs> I mean. Team player. Yeah, I don't blame him for that. I could talk all day about Curtis Wilkerson, man. Yeah. It's the best hire you've made yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny. Just telling you. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Well, um, Danny, obviously uh, this was a big weekend for recruiting because coaches are finally able yeah. to get out on the road without worrying about a game or anything like that. Obviously they didn't go – with the BYU game, they were so concerned that they needed to make sure that they were fully prepared and won the game. Obviously, you do that anyway, but uh, that they just focused totally on that game and didn't even get out on the road recruiting that weekend. Uh, this weekend was a little bit different, though. Yeah, how about that, man? We finally got some recruiting to talk here on mm-hmm. Hog Sports Live, but kind of been waiting on it, been a little bit stagnant. But, yeah, uh, coaches were on the road. We'll start with Coach Pittman. He stayed in uh, central Arkansas. He gets to see teach Z and uh, Charlie Collins uh, right there. You know, TJ plays for Bryant and Collins, of course, at uh, at Little Rock Mills now. So, mm. yeah, he was able to see both of those. I know Kendall Browse, uh, he started his week weekend in Texas. He saw 2024 four-star quarterback uh, Mike Hawkins. And then, uh, of course, 2024 wide receiver Ryan Wingo on – on uh, Friday night. So Jimmy Smith, he was in Florida. He went to see Isaiah Augustave. It's how I'm saying it now, Trey. You got to get it right. Perry Philpott will come after you if you don't say names right. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. You know, I question your morals too. Yeah. For (laughs) For other reasons. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What a jerk. Anyway, uh, Dominique Bowman, he watched R.J. Johnson. (laughs) R.J. Johnson, of course, the cornerback, uh, he actually flipped over, played wide out, 
I've said for a while, man, if corner doesn't work out for RJ, he, you know, he could play wide receiver and, you know, in the SEC, in my opinion, he had eight grabs, 170 yards, three touchdowns and a forced fumble on defense. So pretty good showing in front of his future position coach there. And then, you know, I could run on through the list here. Dal Loggins was in Texas. Michael Scherer was in Texas. He saw Brad Spence, his linebacker commit. Uh, mm-hmm. Cody Kennedy, also in Texas. He ended up going to St. Louis to see Paris Patterson, his big offensive line commitment. And then uh, we'll wrap up with Scott Fountain. He went down to Alabama and saw a 2024 four-star running back, Jamarian Burnett, who they offered, uh, I want to say, back in April. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, another another name to keep an eye on at running back since, uh, you know, of course, Braylon Russell came off the committed list. So, on, I want to ask you about Michael Hawkins. You mentioned a minute ago the quarterback from Allen, mm-hmm. Texas. Um, obviously, that's interesting. He was coached by Chad Morris last year. Yeah, uh, weird. But the, the two teams listed right now at the top on 24-7 sports, the two teams listed as warm are Oklahoma and Arkansas. There's one crystal ball pick right now uh, from Parker Thune uh, who has mm-hmm. Oklahoma. He has a 7 out of 10 confidence level on that. What are your thoughts on him? For those of you who aren't familiar with him, uh, 24-7 Sports has him the number 141 overall prospect in the country, number 11 quarterback. Uh, 24-7 Sports doesn't distinguish between dual or pro style or anything like that, just 11th sure. overall and number 17 overall in, in Texas. He's a, he's the kind of guy that, that fits the bill of what Arkansas is looking for as far as yep. being dual threat. That's right, and, and I agree with the ranking. I like the kid. I think he's electric. You know, he's not huge, 6'1", 185, somewhere in that range, but a really, really dynamic athlete. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, in terms of where it stands, I, I tend to agree with what they've got on there. Arkansas and Oklahoma, in my opinion, are probably the two favorites at this point. You know, it, it's tough now because his dad did play at Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, he went on and played in the NFL. Mike Hawkins had a really good career. So, um Oklahoma's always a little bit different deal, as we've seen in the past. You know, what's what Arkansas may consider a priority, Oklahoma may not. We've seen that benefit Arkansas a couple of times recently, you know, uh, going into the state of Oklahoma and pulling guys out, Luke Haas, mm-hmm. uh, A.J. Green, Micah Tease, those sorts, you know. But, um, yeah, with Oklahoma, their quarterback situation is always up in the air, it seems like. So I don't know exactly – where Michael Hawkins sits on their list. I do think Arkansas would, would take him in a heartbeat if he tried to commit right now. I mean, I think he's he's way, way up there for him. So, you know, we'll, time will tell. Um, Mike's been here a few times now, so it seems real. I, I think he's definitely – and, of course, Walker White's still right here in, in the state. You always have to throw yep. his name in there. But I do think they're going to come away with another good quarterback next year. And, and it's, you know, if I had to guess – over a year out, it probably – those would be two that I'd circle right now. Yeah. And Arkansas has a commitment already for 2023, but we're talking 2024. Malachi sure. Singleton is yep. committed in the 2023 class, a four-star, number 357 overall prospect in the country on the 24-7 sports composite. And then uh, Oklahoma has Jackson Arnold, who can really sling the ball, number 13 overall mm-hmm. prospect in the country, number five quarterback. So Probably they, my favorite quarterback in this year's yeah, class. Yeah, I'm a, I love Jackson Arnold. I'm a big fan too. He can he can yep. really really throw the ball. I think uh, yep. I think they got a good one there. So, Danny, anything else you need to catch us up on uh, in the world of recruiting? Yeah, uh, real quick, uh, a JUCO offer. Uh, you know, it's been a while since we've seen a 2023 offer go out. Yeah. And, and lo and behold, they offered a JUCO kid, Derek Hunter. He's out of um, Hines Community College in Mississippi. Keep an eye on that one, Trey. Uh, 6'4", 300. He's got a lot of options, a lot, a lot of offers so far. Mississippi State's up there for him. Purdue, Tennessee, uh, Texas recently offered. So a lot of competition. But uh, he told me next weekend, uh, which I'm, I'm kind of confused on, so I'm not sure if he's planning on the Liberty game mm-hmm. or the one after that. But, um, uh, yeah, it looks like he could be on campus really soon for yeah. um, an official visit. So 6'4", 300, defensive lineman. You start to get into this late fall, uh, you know, November, December, that's when these, these guys start to see a lot of offers. So um, definitely want to keep an eye on that's Derek Hunter. I'll tell you what, well, 
if he ends up at Arkansas, I hope he turns out better than the last two Juco defensive Yeah, I'm line. telling you, I'm, almost, I'm scared to death of them at this point. I know, it's almost like – They're not on a good run. Statistically, it should it should work out. Uh, yep. Yeah. And, and best of luck to, to Derek. I'm sure he's going to be fine. But, mm. um, yeah, Arkansas's trend here lately has not been a good one with, with Juco's. Hey, I'll tell you something good about that. Um, you know, that Liberty game got picked up for a 3 o'clock kickoff. It's on SEC Network. It's not on ESPN or anything. But 3 o'clock kickoff – when you consider that Arkansas has not had a home game since October 1st, and this one's November yeah, 5th, I mean, you needed this to be a really good uh, time slot so you could get recruits in because it's hard to get players from Texas or Mississippi mm-hmm. or, or anywhere to come that far to Fayetteville, Arkansas for an 11 a.m. game. So uh, good at, know, at 3 o'clock. Our, sorry to cut you off there, yeah. but our guy Brandon Marcello with 24-7, um, he tweeted this morning, it, it kind of threw me off for a second, but he said that could be a top 25 matchup oh, yeah. when Liberty rolls in. So I guess it could be, you know, Arkansas could pop back in there after this week at five and what would that be? Five and three. Yeah, they're five so and they three. Could. Now you look at it, they, South Carolina's ranked in there and Arkansas, you know, gave mm-hmm. South Carolina all they wanted and more. Um, Cincinnati's ranked, uh, you know, in the top 25. Yeah. We were talking about that a little bit too, Danny, just, be, uh, you know, looking at the, the rankings, like you got Michigan, uh, like Alabama would smoke Michigan. I'm sorry. Yeah, they we would. talked about that. You know, just, yeah. just the way the polls are, and it's just based on, like, you know, wins and lo- you know, obviously wins and losses and stuff, but there's so much more to it in terms of who's a better team. Stuff like I would take Arkansas again over South Carolina, even though South Carolina's on a little bit of a roll. They're just playing different to me, different yep. levels of opponent. And you're going to get Texas A&M at home, and they're reeling a little bit. But, um, yeah, there's teams that obviously Arkansas has beaten that are in the top, in the AP Top 25. Arkansas has got one vote last I saw in the AP Top 25 poll. Clemson's got a vote for number one. I don't know who's voted Clemson number one, but I don't know. I watched <laughs> what, them this weekend. Wasn't, and, it, wasn't us. I could yeah. <laughs> be that much. Yeah. Man, I have not been impressed with them at all. I mean, if you got quarterback problems, then that's a problem. That's the biggest that's problem it. you can have. So, yeah. anyway. All right, Danny, anything else? No, brother, I'm you wanna, good. You want to talk about Curtis? Uh, you know, <laughs> not really. No, <laughs> I think Andrew's said it best, so we'll leave it there. Yeah, all right, brother, appreciate you. All right, man, we'll see you. All right, everybody, that's Danny West. Again, you can follow Danny at Danny West 24-7. Uh, does a great job at the Hog Sports Recruiting Analyst. Been with us for a number of years and a uh, very good friend of mine as well. So, it's good to work with your friends. I like to think we got a good working relationship with the guys over at Hog Sports. Another person I have a good relationship with is the people over at Ozarks Go. If you haven't, if you haven't tried out Ozarks Go, if you haven't looked into it, if you're disappointed with your internet service, you don't like the price, you don't like that they keep jacking it up year after year, Ozarks Go is not going to jack your price up. They may get you in on like an introduction because they also offer 1,000 megabits per second, which they call their gigabit, and they offer 100 megabits per second, which is probably fine for most people, but they can try out the the gigabit service for the first month. Like uh, they might do something like that where they give you a promotion, like pay for the the 100 megabits per second, but get the 1,000 megabits per second for a month. But after that, like, you know, trying it out or something, they're not going to jack your price up in year two versus what it was in year one. You know, you're just going to pay the same amount. They do a great job. If you're, if you're interested, if you believe in what I say and the, the products that I would endorse, uh, I'm not going to endorse anybody I don't believe in. I've used these guys for 16 months now, and I've been very pleased. Go to ozarksgo.net slash hog, H-A-W-G, and you can find out more about them. Again, ozarksgo.net slash hog, H-A-W-G, or you can call them at 479-684-4900. I'll leave uh, all that information in the description on YouTube. Um, and again, you know, these 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 are your neighbors here. These are people who live in, in northwest Arkansas, northeast Oklahoma, um, people who, you know, you're not, you're not just going to be shipped off to some call center in some other country or something, you know. So go check them out. Very, very pleased. 100% uptime. Never have to unplug it and plug it back in. Ozarksgo.net slash H-A-W-G. All right. We're going to questions now? Could we be? Let's go to questions. See if anybody's got anything interesting to say. James Bradley says, let's go smack them in the mouth. I like Arkansas a lot in this game. I like them a lot. I'm just going to say that. Now, things happen in Auburn that are weird, that give me a little pause, <laughs> but I like Arkansas a lot. 
Will Bon Bonham says, "Hey Trey, in your opinion, what was the funniest Razorback football? What was the funniest Razorback football years? Houston Nutt era, Bobby Petrino era, et cetera." Uh, let's see. I mean, it's hard to say because both of those had, you know, good moments. Obviously the, you know, the 2007 season was kind of marred. Now, 98 for me, I was a student at the university of Arkansas. That was fantastic, especially where we'd been. I, I went to school there in 96, you know, the first two years under, they're not the first unit, but the last two years under, uh, Danny Ford, you know, I went to Arkansas after going to a bunch of games in 95, you know, when they were doing really well, the season of first. Uh, but 98 was fantastic. I was storming the field. Um, you know, the goalpost almost hit me in the head. In fact, you, you can see me in the video. Um, I can point myself out of that bo- that uh, goalpost coming down. And it, when a goalpost comes down, it probably doesn't make the sound that you think it makes. It's like, ping, like a loud ping sound um, when it breaks. But that was a great year, 98. As far as my favorite time covering Arkansas, you know, 2006 was pretty great. There was all the drama then all that stuff with the, the Springdale 5 stuff that kind of, you know, the mouths on and all that stuff that kind of took away a little bit of the enjoyment of that. Uh, 2010 was great. 2011 was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, those are probably the years. I mean, the, one, the years that they won the most games. Well, I thought last year was a lot of fun. Last year was a lot of fun for me. I mean, to see Arkansas finally coming back to relevancy. Tommy Atkins says, even though we lost to Texas A&M this year, we should have won, but I would have to say at least we are better in a better position to make a bowl game anyways would be to Auburn and the refs this weekend, 38-21. So I kind of thought that Arkansas would lose one they shouldn't and win one they shouldn't. The one I thought that they might lose that they shouldn't just because Jordan Hare is tricky for them for whatever reason uh, is Auburn. That's, I picked that in my preseason that they would lose the game. Just, But I think they've already lost the one. I think they already lost Texas a and I, th- I don't think they should have lost that game, uh, and they did. So maybe that they will um, maybe they will, will change that. Paul Mitchell says, change your mind and come to Auburn. I mean, somebody had to fly me on their private jet. I'm just not – I'm not going – all that travel, flying into Atlanta, driving two hours to Auburn, and getting the worst seat in college football the worst seat in college football in that press box. I'm just not doing it. If somebody wants to fly me down there, I would buy I would buy a ticket and sit in the stands before I do that. Paul Mitchell uh, – yeah, sorry, I read it. Don Eldridge says, glad you're back to the angle shot. That straight on one was different. <laughs> well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a secret, Don. I got a teleprompter. And I, I, the main reason I got it is because for the CBS stuff – uh, when I do stuff for CBS Sports because it's pretty quick hitter and I, I wanted to have like, you know, just kind of bullet points. And what I did was I uh, I spelled everything out and it, it didn't work out very well. Uh, you know, I just, I, I, it was a test run basically. So I like the angle shot too. It's my good side. You don't see the other side. This is the good side, Don. Stephen Shope says, what's the score going to be, Trey, Arkansas and Auburn? I like Arkansas to cover. I'm not ready to do a score yet. I'll do that probably Thursday. Uh, but I do like Arkansas to cover. I think it's at four and a half or five right now. Tommy Atkins will give his score. He says 38-21, Hogs. Uh, Brenda Morgan Fletcher says we have to win this game. Go Hogs. Tommy Atkins says if we beat Auburn, do we sneak back in the top 25? I don't know if that'll be enough. It obviously depends on what happens ahead of Arkansas. But I don't know if beating a bad Auburn team – uh, even though it's on the road, will be quite enough. They just have one boat right now. So they would have to, like, really trounce them, I think. I would just be – I would be surprised at this team if they lost Auburn, even though it's a road game. I, w- I just think that they've got a lot of quarterback issues. Um, there's a lot of dissension, it seems like, in the program. It just doesn't feel like a good vibe over there. And it feels like everybody's ready to start over. Just get this season over with so we can start over. That's kind of – that's the vibe. I just think it would be real disappointing for Arkansas to lose this one. Especially when your quarterback's KJ Jefferson, you know, and theirs is Robbie Ashford. I'm not saying he won't have some success running the ball and stuff like that, but I just think consistent success isn't going to happen for him. Lane New said, oh, we didn't get to the injuries. I wanted to talk about the injuries. So they're expecting to be about as healthy as they can get. Where is that? I've got a note here somewhere. Did I lose it? There it is. All right. So the injury report. I think that's the first question I asked Sam after what did he do all weekend. 
Uh, obviously, you're not getting Jalen Catalan or Ladarius Bishop back. Miles Slusher looks like they're going to do some individual with him today and hope that uh, they'll be able to progress him from there. K.J. Jefferson did not throw it all last week. He'll get back to throwing, obviously. Kari Johnson, Jaden Johnson, both will return to practice today. Malik Chavis is – Nearing a return. Okay, so he might miss today. I think they're hoping Tuesday on him. But obviously we know the situation with him. Latavius Brini will be closer to 100% after a nagging ankle injury. Um, Marcus Henderson won't be back. He probably wasn't going to play anyway as the backup center. Takias Crawford will be back today. They say Bumper Pool feels better. Drew Sanders feels better. Drew Sanders is dealing some stuff too. Jaden Hazelwood is just going to have a – He's just going to have a shoulder issue all season. He's, you know, he's, he's feeling better, but it's just going to nag him all season. So that's pretty much everything on injuries. Sorry, I meant to get to that earlier and uh, skipped ahead of it. Lane News says the depth chart came out for Auburn game today and Simeon Blair is the starting safety and Hudson Clark has moved back to backup corner. What are your thoughts on that? I, I've given my thoughts on who I, thought, I think should be the secondary. I don't want to just continue to harp on Simeon Blair, but I don't think that he should be one of the guys starting right now based on the field performance. Okay? I just don't. I like Hudson Clark at the nickel, but he's going to have to play both, as Sam Pittman said. Or not nickel, safety. I like Hudson Clark at safety. Um, I like Slusher at nickel or safety. I don't know how they're going to shake it out, right? You know, I, mean, I like Kari Johnson at safety, too. I think he's done some good things, but um, we'll see how it shakes out. Davey Johnson says, I love your walk and talk after the game. I'm looking for right after the game. Yeah, the last couple I've just done down the street over here because I haven't traveled. I don't travel like I used to. I just, you know, it's interesting for a lot of people in my position, publisher, and this has been for years. But a lot of them don't even write anything or, you know, even do podcasts or anything. They just manage everything. And I kind of do – I do, obviously, covering the team. And, you know, we've expanded the site as we've grown over the years. We've added more people, Curtis and Andrew. But, um, I mean, I don't know. It's just – it's hard to travel and do all the other things that I have to do. So, that's why I don't travel as much as I used to. But regardless, I still wouldn't go to Auburn. Jackie Price says, can we watch the basketball game on TV? No, not on TV. I mean, the best you could hope for is something like ESPN Toe. If you know, you know. Elsa, Elisa Sales, Sal, Elisa Salas Chapman. It isn't going to be televised yet. Kevin Alexander says, said, we're fortunate to get tickets to the night B-ball, tonight's B-Ball exhibition. It'll be fun. I wonder how many people will be there. They had like 5,500, I think, for the, um, for the red-white game. And I think all, I guess all those people have tickets. So, and that was in Barnhill Arena. Thoughts on Hudson and Slusher at the safeties? I think that's maybe what. I think that's maybe the the play there. I like Kari there too. I think he does a fine job, fine enough job. And I don't think any of those guys are studs except for Slusher. I think he's you know probably the only guy in the secondary right now that I would say next level potential guy. But uh, I kind of feel like maybe those two two guys should be your – now, I don't think Arkansas should be in a 3-2-6 against Auburn. I, I would like to see him in a four-man front. No question. Rocket's going to run for 170 and two against Auburn and also catch a touchdown, giving him three total for the game. Mark it down. All right, Tyler. Tyler Miller says – Tyler Miller says, player's not playing well at all. We need to get some of these young guys reps. I think Parker could play his position better. Kiwan, I asked Sam Pittman about Kiwan Parker. They like what he's doing. West Glass says, need some paid monitor moderators to protect your morals. Yeah. Such a bad person. Maybe for other reasons, but I don't think mispronouncing people's names. Davey Johnson says, is Slinger back? I mean, Slusher? They think so. We'll see today. Today will be a big day for him. Jonathan Parker says, do they keep the offense wide open? I'd like to see him. I'd like to see him do it. Landon Montgomery says, can the Hogs win out, Trey? They can. I'm not, predi- I'm not predicting that they're going to win out. But, yes, individually, every single game they can win. People said Ole Miss was unbeatable. They didn't look unbeatable against LSU. You know, I don't think LSU is great. I think they got a lot of athletes. I think they're starting to come together a little bit. Uh, but I still like Arkansas at home in both of those games, at least a little bit. Not saying like I definitely – I don't like them as much as I like Arkansas going to Auburn and beating Auburn. But I like 
Arkansas in those games a little against LSU and Ole Miss at home. Landon Montgomery says, do our two talented freshman receivers play this week in the secondary? It's a good question. Probably not because they got so many people back healthy. So I don't think that they're going to have to go there. Will Bonham says, hey, Trey, your opinion. What was the funnest rate? Oh, I already went on that. I guess I jumped. Tim Eskew says, Liberty will have plenty of tricks up their sleeves. Thank goodness it's a home game. They treated BYU like a bunch of altar boys. I'll tell you what, man. Um, Liberty looked good, and they've got a good team. I mean, it's a it's incredible how tough this schedule is. I mean, BYU, Cincinnati, Missouri State, hell, they were hell. Um, Liberty, it's – it's, it's, it's up there for non-conference, non-conference slates. Marcus Brown says 38-28 Hogs. Thon Eldred says, well, yeah, I didn't want to be obvious about the good side. <laughs> Tyler Miller says 42-17 Hogs in a beatdown. Lane New says agreed. Hunter Floyd says, where's the walk and talk? I can't find it anymore. It's there. Oh, it's not on – I don't put it on Facebook anymore. I just put it on YouTube. So, if you want to check out the walk and talk after the game, you can watch it on YouTube or you can listen to it on the podcast. But, yeah, it's on uh, It's on YouTube. Just go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you're alerted any time up we, we upload new videos. Yeah, the YouTube channel is just Hog Sports. Or you can could, you could just Google or uh, do a search for me on the YouTube um, bar and, and you'll see it there. All right, everybody, before we get out of here, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already. Also available on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. It's just the hogsports.com channel. Uh, search Trey Biddy, search Hogsports, and you'll find it. Uh, also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us that five star review if you haven't done so already. Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. And Hog Sports is just $1 right now for your first month at HAWGSports.com. Again, one more time, subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. Certainly appreciate that. Leave us a five star review. You want to see our latest five star review on Apple Podcasts? Let's see if I got it here. This show is the one. This is from Drew Z Baby. Hog Sports Live consistently has the best insight illuminated by research and experience in sports media. If you want quality Razorback podcasts without lazy take lording, this is the one. Highly recommend for higher level Hog Sports potting. Appreciate that. Get on there and leave a review. If I like it, I'll read it on the air. We had a lot of great reviews. We didn't have any like crazy ones. Um, but we had some sincere ones, and we appreciate that too. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.